Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. It's still Welcome, everybody. Welcome once again to this week's edition of the Still Real Fest Show, episode number 109. 109 straight weeks of the Still Real Fest Show for March 15th, 2012. Two, two weeks from now, we'll be doing our WrestleMania 28 predictions. Three weeks from now, we'll be doing our post-show WrestleMania 28 of WrestleMania 28. It is WrestleMania 28 season. Thank you for joining us on the road to WrestleMania. I am one half of the wrestling podcast, Tag Team Champions of the World. I am the champ, Jeff Peck. And joining me this week, back in the saddle again, uh, editor-in-chief of ChemicalClutchBlog.com, former uh, announcer for CZW, ROH, and ECW, but more importantly, soon-to-be father, welcome back the one and only Eric Arjula. Eric, how are we, buddy? Eric. I'm doing well. And, uh, you know what? Baby's right around the corner. It looks like we're, we're going to have a WrestleMania baby. Yeah, did you plan that just so it would be like the busiest week of your life? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I was just hoping that uh, I could miss wrestling. You know, it's, I, I mean, it, I have the Camel Clutch blog going now. I think it's uh, three years. It'll be three years in April. And I mean, by far and away, the WrestleMania results and just everything WrestleMania, busiest month, the WrestleMania results has been the busiest two, uh, you know, the, the two most popular blogs uh, in the history of, uh, you know, of, of the blog being published. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping for. I don't even know. I don't even know what to do. I mean, do I, you know, do I run home and 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 write about WrestleMania? Do I just bag it? I don't even know what to do. I just uh, this kid better get out quick. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Just uh, just how magic works. Where uh, <laughs> Eric's busiest week of the year is also the same week that uh, his child is welcome to the world. So that should be a really cool week for you. Um, we have Eric this week and next week, and then he goes on our, our what we would call maternity leave for. <laughs> Some time, right? Paternity. Leave, Jeff. Paternity. Leave. Paternity. I'm sorry. Paternity, not maternity, because he's not having the baby. So paternity right. leave. Um, or is all we know that you're not physically having the baby, even though Arnold Schwarzenegger has proved science wrong. Um, this is correct. Uh, you're back in the saddle with us here this week. We're going to talk a lot about what happened on Raw, uh, the rock and rap concert that took place, uh, Y2J, CM Punk. Uh, the HBK Undertaker segment, uh, if Punk and Jericho get too personal, Eric Bischoff takes a shot at Jeremy Borash. Let's kick it right off with the uh, the rap concert. John Cena was, uh, as Michael Cole put, a word I've never heard before, attitudinal. Right. Um, what did you think of that whole segment there, John Cena? It was pretty quick compared to what the Rocks concert was, but uh, did it come off well to you? Did, did John Cena come off like a, the fan favorite that creative is hoping that he is? come mania time when it's a 50 50 split miami or uh was it basically uh, a segment we could do without um you know uh i wouldn't say that you could do without it because uh because i liked it but i thought of the last three weeks that was probably his weakest of uh all the segments it was kind of weird you you know you mentioned it uh right there when you were when you were introducing it just how they, they did it in the beginning of the show and kind of just forgot about it it's kind of weird uh to see that because scene is usually a guy that hangs out throughout the show or winds up popping up at the end of the show. So they do this deal at the very beginning. And, uh, I mean, I liked it. I was entertained. I, you know, I liked that, um, era of John Cena, especially when he was, a, when he was a heel, cause he used to do, uh, some really fun and, um, and edgy promos, uh, when he was a heel and he used to have, have that gimmick going. So, uh, it was, it was nice 
to see it back again. But I thought of the last three weeks of uh, Cena promos specifically, I thought it was probably uh, the weakest of the bunch. Um, you know, not to say that it was bad. Um, it just seemed like, I don't know, um, it seemed like it kind of got lost in the shuffle by the end uh, By the end of the show. You know, The Rock had um, 11, 15 minutes out there. It seemed like Cena had about, about three to five minutes, and he was in and out. Yeah, you know, I... I, I... When I first heard the rap concert was coming out, uh, I thought in the back of my head, like, oh, it'd be pretty cool if they did the whole, you know, his, his word life song that he used to do in the Dr. Thugonomics. So it was a nice throwback to see that because, you know, as we keep hearing, you know, in, in Michael Cole's commentary and, and reports, is that they really want to make John Cena a fan favorite again, especially with, you know, the 18 to 34s, and, you know, anybody that's basically an adult wrestling fan, make him a fan favorite once again, when he first came in wrestling. So I thought it was really interesting to see that it was that throwback character. But the time given, as compared to The Rock, it was like, um, you know, I watched, I rewatched both segments again uh, after Monday Night Raw, and, like, John Cena's segment was, like, five minutes, and The Rock's was 15. So I don't know if that's WWE's doing or if that was the game plan between these two guys. You know, you know we're going to give you guys these two segments, do what you want with them. Um, nonetheless, I mean, com as compared to the rock concert and what we've seen weeks prior, John Cena just, in my opinion, it was just very, very flat, got nothing across. And, um, it, it certainly wasn't as entertaining as the rock concert was. Yeah, definitely. Uh, totally, totally agree with that. Um, you know, and it's not to say that it was bad, um, because I, I definitely liked it. Um, and you know, it'd be nice. Um, it'd be nice to see him do it again. Uh, sometime, but uh, you know, I mean, I read some uh, bloggers and, and and some comments on Twitter and Facebook that were like, you know, Cena should go back to this every week. I disagree on that. Um, I don't think he should go back to that every week, but uh, yeah, it just seemed like it kind of got lost in the shuffle. I think, you know, um, if they were going to do something like that, I think they should have had uh, Cena one week where he could do his 15, 20 minutes at the end of the show and then rock the next week where he could do his 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I would have preferred that. You know, make it seem like it's a big deal because when you look back and, you know, John Cena came out, was introduced by Jerry Lawler, it, normal lighting for Raw, no big deal, just him in the ring, five minutes, he's done. The Rock, you know, he had the the crowd going, he had the lighting, he had the, the chair, the music, all this other stuff, and it just made John Cena look a lot lesser of a role as compared to The Rock, while the last couple of weeks they've been pretty even keel in their segments. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Uh, you know, I, I, I've heard, I've heard some people. You know, I mean, I haven't been on with you for the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you, uh, you and and the uh, co-hosts have been talking about um, just the dueling back and forth with with Rock and Cena. And you know, I've I've heard a lot of people criticize um, the segments, saying Rock really came off weak the last couple of weeks, and. Uh, you know, I don't know if he necessarily came off weak, but it just seemed to me like he really turned it up about 10 notches uh, this week as opposed to the last couple of weeks. You know, you bring up an interesting point. I want to get your thoughts on Eric since you haven't been on the show the last couple of weeks is I brought up, you know, that whole infamous now the wrist moments with The Rock there written on his wrist and all this stuff. My logic on that theory is that I actually think they did that purposely to help put Cena over. You know, the way I put it as is that Rock is an actor, John Cena to a certain extent, an actor, and they could pull off stuff like that, make it seem like it's real to us because wrestling fans always eat that up. And, and to the extent where, you know, you compare The Rock and Cena in the last couple of weeks, I really feel like, you know, a lot of fans thought that The Rock, you know, they had higher expectations for him than are normally set for The Rock in, in these types of situations where, you know, every time you thought The Rock was going to blow John Cena out of the water. Well, that's not going to happen in a feud because why would you want to see a match where The Rock verbally dominates John Cena every single week on the mic and then they wrestle in Miami? It, it, it kind of loses that feel of like, okay, this is a match where I'm going into this. It's a dream match. I don't know who wins. Um, you know, or I know, you know, if the rock is dominating the mic, well, this rock looks like a much superior wrestler than John Cena. Now, let me ask you this, Eric. Did you think that wrist moment with the, the notes on the rock's wrist, was it real or was it, uh, or was it more of a, uh, a fake storyline? I'm shocking that we're talking about this on wrestling. And, right. and what do you feel like there? Uh, you know, is this creative's objective to make John Cena look good? And, you know, The Rock and John Cena as well? Or is John Cena really getting the upper hand on him week after week uh, leading up to at least this past Monday night on Raw? Um, you know, I, I mean, I think it was a total work. Uh, you know, I mean, The Rock makes a lot of money. The Rock's been around for a long time. 
don't think anybody's going in there to double cross the rock. 